One of the most notable observations at the ongoing artificial intelligence workshop hosted by Nigeria's Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy in Abuja is the healthy number of female participants. Still, Nigeria cannot rest on its oars and strives to encourage more women to get into the technology space. Arise business correspondent Rotu Sodiri got input from female tech players at the workshop. What is the role of women in society and in our economies? And in most countries, we are representing more than 50% of the population. I just recently learned that in Nigeria, I think women entrepreneurs form more than 40% of business owners in the country. And we are creative minds who have commitments to both society as well as building economies and, and supporting new industries. So when you think about that, I think there are three roles for women. The first is a recognition that we are at the forefront of consumers, whether it's in beauty or healthcare, education at the core, but also immersed in technology and financial services and other industries already. The second piece of it then becomes, well, how do we get women to be more of the producers in this economy? And the question there is, how do we think about things like access to capital and the right kind of resources? And then the third is as the architects, and we're seeing transformation of a whole range of industries in a bunch of different ways. I've met a number of entrepreneurs within the AI space, many of whom are women, are just thinking differently about new sectors, industries we can create. So how do we get more women into this space? There are probably a number of different factors at play, but two that come to mind for me are, number one, capital. Capital is still a constraint, and when you think about traditional fin financing resources, if you're an entrepreneur, some of what I experienced as well, the friends, family, fools is usually the first thing. That's the proxy for networks. Women don't necessarily naturally have access to these kinds of networks, so how do you create more of that early stage access to capital? A second, and that could be collateral and through other mechanisms, um, and a second is just simply, honestly, the space. Uh, recognizing that women, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're in a company, women don't naturally jump to the forefront necessarily. And so in my own experience, what I've seen is when given the space through my female mentors who are older that look to say, I see some potential here, help me think about this opportunity, or actually men who have been allies as well, just simply not assuming we're going to jump to the front of the room with an idea of creativity, but also saying, I'd like your opinion, like, tell me what you think, and calling us into a space has been profoundly impactful. Um, so, so my thinking is, like, if we create this space, but also think about the technical aspects of what kind of capital is needed and why there may be different barriers, I think we'll start to naturally bring more women in. Um, so one thing we do know is that there are not enough women in technology. It's a global pro problem, I have to say, it's not a Nigerian problem. And I think there are a number of things that need to happen to have more women in technology. I think the first thing is we need more women in STEM to start with. And so we need to encourage young girls and girls in school to take STEM courses. And there's a number of things that need to happen within that. One is profiling women that are already working in STEM and technology roles so that girls know it's possible to be a woman in tech. So I think that needs to happen. I think teachers need to be trained and supported to support girls that are in STEM education. So I think there's a range of things that need to happen in the education context around role modeling, mentorship, and so on for girls to pursue STEM courses. And then I think in terms of entry into the workforce or people pivoting into tech roles, there's a number of things that also need to happen. I think that organizations need to um, refresh their recruitment practices to ensure that women that qualify do actually get given a chance and that they're not stereotyping around certain roles like engineering or so on about whether women can perform those roles as men uh, as well as men so I think recruitment practices need to be reframed to include more women that are qualified into the workforce I think there needs to also be more mentorship in the workplace as well as role models in the workplace that are supporting women to get into tech, but also to stay in tech. Because I think that sometimes there is a delta between the women that do get into tech and women that stay in tech and progress in tech. So I think recruitment practices, organizational practices need to help that to happen. And there need to be more mentors and more champions for women in these professions. I have been a woman of techn in technology for a long time. My whole career has been in technology. I studied computer science for my undergraduate, my master's and my PhD. And I have worked with the biggest companies in the world. I've worked for both Microsoft and Google, uh, development organizations. 
and I, I run my own company right now. I feel it's an important role for women to be in technology because we are more than 50% of the world. Let nobody lie to you, right? Um, we need to define how technology is built and we need to build it ourselves and lead it. So the last part is very crucial for me because sometimes we want to, to be building and defining it, but we're not leading in how technology is being utilized, being funded and all of these things. However, we can build all this stuff. If you're not defining the leadership part of it, everything you build will go to nothing because he who pays the piper chooses the music, right? And you need to be able to be choosing the music. So we need to be paying the piper. So defining the leadership, a woman, a female led leadership in technology is very, very important. And I've seen that in the past, maybe five years of my life when I've been like in senior leadership where there are decisions I wouldn't make when I was younger and I'll get frustrated because I was tired because I was just a younger uh, person in the workforce. But when I, I, I came into leadership and I was able to make some decisions and define where funding and budget is going, you get a lot of traction, you get more women in the room. So every team I've been leading for the past seven or so years has had a lot more women than any of the other, like when I was working within organizations than any other organization, they were asking, why do you have so many women? And I would say, because I made a deliberate decision to hire women. That is a decision you can only make as a leader. There should be more co collaborations really, right? So there are activities and civil society groups and initiatives that are centered around women. So when um, entities that are, I mean, both private and public sector right now, when they're um, crafting their initiatives and activities for maybe the year or strategic plan for like five years, they should take more del deliberate steps to partner with these organizations. Um, it could be local organizations and maybe international organizations. So collaboration, deliberate steps to say, you know, put policies in place to say, you know what, um, we want more women participation really. Uh, and then, um, I, I, I don't know if this is the right time to talk about um, there should be incentivized as well really. Because when you, when you incentivize people would have reasons to want to participate really so um, there, are, there, are, there are different ways to go about incentivizing women to participate so uh, I believe that this would see more women in tech essentially but what this program is also doing is that um, it also has a room filled with women as well really and when there is representation um, people out there are seeing that oh this um, place or this goal or ambition that I have I've nurtured within me is attainable really so I think that's also one of the um, key things that this workshop has made us realize that women um, giving women a place on the table and asking inviting them over to participate would also show that or, or show the young girls in school that oh you can get to this point in your career so yeah. Rotus bringing us news from the national um Artificial Intelligence um, Strategy Workshop organized by the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. And um, I just must say, as, it's, um, as, we, as we look at uh, gender, that there have been research as to the importance of gender play in AI, because AI is developed by human beings. And it's even seen, according to Harvard research, that AI mirrors some of the biases of gender. And so when women are part of forming that strategy, then it makes it a more balanced, um, it's more balanced in terms of the outcome. Don't smile. Why are you smiling? <laughs> <laughs> I think that the bigger issue is that, look, we have a fast growing you know, tech ecosystem and women are increasingly playing a major role in that regard. And it's good to see that at a conference on artificial intelligence, you have, you know, women in tech yeah. who are heading, you know, many of these uh, establishments and proving that, look, it's not a, a, a form of entrepreneurship that is restricted to just men. And these women are role models, in my view. But even more important, the point I made about education the last time you know, uh, Rotus uh, brought in uh, a report about taking a look at the curriculum to improve upon what they call STEAM, science, technology, arts, and uh, mathematics, you know, training, and to increase the population of women and even men who are within that uh, space. As we've seen, you know, a lot of opportunities there, a lot of potential there, and a lot of uh, young people, uh, both male and female, doing uh, innovative things. Yeah. And of course, as we say, AI is the future. Yes, it is. 
I must pay, I'm talking about education, I must pay um, um, a lot of recognition to some women who've, who've done great work, especially in the tech space in Nigeria. And, and remember that once we had a female minister for communications, uh, Mrs. Omobola Johnson. Johnson yeah. And then, of course, we have women like Oreolua, Lessi, Shomolu Lessi, um, we have, well, few, you know, uh, of the BTEC. We have women like Inkem Bego as well. Uh, we have Funke Opeke of Main One. So we, women have played quite a significant role, and it's just great to see that that is being sustained and we see more women playing in this field. So why I was laughing was that I am, I'm really a pioneer in the space of women in tech. About seven, eight years ago, with another body I co-founded, EduPay, we started something called Technovation, where we partnered for young girls in school in tech. And you know we use a lot of our own funding for that to make that happen. Also, I'd also consider being a champion. I mean, if you check online, I, then I used to be a guest writer for techcity.com. I think I'd wrote, written a piece where I championed the need for more women in technology. And, you know, and it's a cornerstone piece where everybody, you know, when you're checking for an article in women in tech, definitely that piece pops up. So, and I know the ecosystem. I know the cultural attitude to it. You know, there's at first the cultural slant where a lot of people think, oh, a lot of women should not be in tech, in engineering, for instance, in STEM, you know, because when you go to most engineering departments in universities, uh, there's this famous, it's like a men's club, you know, and all of that. But increasingly that is changing. And uh, things like technovation and also getting a lot of women on board in tech and advocacy and also, you know, through platforms like Wimbies and the likes can do a whole lot of work, you know, as regards that. And also because of my passion in the early days of uh, Main One, I had done a lot of partnerships, you know, with, with Main One. You know, most of the hackathon and things like that I anchored for Main One over the years, even before the sale. And I had worked closely with Antifun Kelkbeke, you know, like I fondly love to call her. And I know the dream and the vision, you know. Also, as regards many innovation hubs, you know, like the CC hubs of yeah. this world, the Ideas Hub, but and you know, and yeah, yeah, even Ojoma used to be in British Council before and she did a lot of work. And in fact, when the federal government on the Good Luck Jonathan administration started uh, their Ideas Hub, there was a woman that led it, Helen Anatogun, that I worked very closely with. Helen Anatogun used to be in Microsoft. So, I mean, I, I know the ecosystem, I know the great capacity and role women play, you know, and now that Microsoft now has like an engineering hub here also too for development. And I see a lot of women, what they are doing. I mean, no, just only recently I had the chance to speak to the engineering team in Microsoft, you know, uh, about training them, you know, equipping them with skills for the future. So I pretty much know the ecosystem and those that make the arguments that women don't play a major role, it's not true. I mean, women, in fact, have a more resilient strength of playing a major role in this ecosystem. It's just about how we can catch them young. And catching them young is no longer from the secondary schools now. It should be from the primary, even the nursery schools now, and introducing tech, AI, and coding, and things like that to them, and they can do a whole lot better. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much.